What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. We've got another mock draft for you guys today, but first, as always, going over the news, going over stat of the day, and then I want to show you guys um, my list so far of the player breakdowns. So if someone's on the list, you don't need to mention them anymore. I'm probably going to end up doing it. Uh, but if you've got a player breakdown you want to see of someone not on that list, then you can mention it in the comments, tweet it at me, at NickZalekFFA, whatever you want to do uh, so we can get it on there. Uh, but very, very few uh, bits of news this week. We're kind of seeing uh, more to the end, the tail end of free agency in the NFL. So we're only going to see a few updates now uh, until the draft. And then we're going to have a million updates to give you guys. Um, but one big one, uh, we'll actually get to the big one in a second. That's Tyler Lockett. But uh, Goodell talked about uh, his plan for the NFL offseason. Like, are we expecting... Um, camp to look like it did last year, where there's a lot of things that are virtual, uh, there's a lot of restrictions in place. And his answer was to start, it's probably going to be more virtual, um, but it doesn't really expect it to look like it did last season. It's basically just going to depend on each individual team's vaccination. So they're not going to make it um, like mandatory. You don't have to get it. But as you hit different thresholds for number or percent, I don't know how they're going to word it, it's going to be the same for every team though. I would say like you need 25% vaccinations to open this up and then 50% vac vaccinations to start doing something else. So it's going to kind of look like that um, and so teams are going to be incentivized obviously to get them done. Um, but I think that's just like a good plan and hopefully we see just like 100% across teams or like 95% across teams and then they're just good to go um, for like in-person camps, which of course for the rookies is really going to help them out. Uh, people changing teams going to help them out. So we, we don't want to see what we saw last season. Uh, we want guys also uh, in-person practicing and reduce the injuries. Next bit of news, uh, Tyler Lockett signs a new deal. Four years, $69 million, $37 million guaranteed. We knew he wasn't going to another team, right? Didn't know how much he was going to get, but he, he wasn't going anywhere. Uh, and this basically means Seattle's the same. Right, Wilson, Metcalf, Lockett, Carson. That's the core of the offense. That's all coming back. Again, they have said, Pete Carroll said he wants to run the ball more this season. They shouldn't. Uh, I don't think anyone, uh, I don't think anyone watching their games thinks they should run more. They have Russell Wilson at quarterback, but we're going to have to see. Um, I don't want to buy too much into that thinking, oh, they're going to run Carson like 30 plays a game. They're barely going to use Wilson like, I think it's basically going to be like what we saw in the second half of last season, uh, which is upsetting if you want to go after Metcalf, Lockett, and Wilson, but it's the reality of the situation with uh, their coaching staff. They just like to run the ball a lot. Bruce Arian said that Keyshawn Vaughn is going to have a breakout year. Uh, that's just not going to happen. You know, he's not going to play over Fournette. He's not, not going to play over Ronald Jones. Um, so I just, you never ever, if Bruce Arian says something, Basically say, okay, the opposite is probably true. Like he just, he only lies. He doesn't know how to tell truth. Uh, 17 game season has been approved. So we are going to see 17 games this year. Uh, excited to see how exactly that's going to work out. I don't know what they're going to do with buys. Uh, it would be nice to kind of see just like a universal buy in just the middle of the season. Because, you know, every year, like some teams just get screwed with, you know, where their buy ends up being. Like we've seen teams uh, when there was like the hurricane, whatever, they have a week one buy. We've seen teams that get like a week four buy, like no one wants that. But I think if like everyone deserves a buy halfway through the season. So if you've got an extra week, throw a buy in the middle and then you can divvy up the buys uh, elsewhere. This also means it's not even. So some teams are gonna get one extra home game and some teams are gonna get one extra away game. It's not gonna make a massive impact, but obviously that is a slight competitive advantage for some teams, but biggest thing is probably um, we're getting an extra week, and so records are kind of going to change, and how we think about seasons is going to change. It's much easier now to have a thousand yard season. It's much easier to break a record when you've got another game to play. Um, but for fantasy, this isn't really making much of an impact. Besides, when you hold the championship, there's probably just going to be one extra like regular season matchup, which is actually kind of nice. You know, when you think about it, it's what like. 13, I believe it's 13 games in the regular season. Uh, I don't know, expanding that to 14 regular season games, just adding one extra one in there, you're not going to get as many situations when like, you know, four teams are six and seven or seven and six, or basically like half of your league is like right in that range. You can have one more week to kind of differentiate a little bit. I kind of like that. 
Um, it's looking like the 49ers are going to take Mac Jones third overall. They said they're not going to move Jimmy G, but I don't see how that's even a possibility. Like, why would you keep Garoppolo, who's, I'm not going to say, like, an incredible asset, but a, an asset that people will be willing to pay a good amount for. Um, I just don't see how they keep him. So, could he go to New England? Could he go to another team? I don't know where he's going to go, but my guess is if that is their plan to take Mac Jones third overall, Jimmy G's gone. And so I'm not changing my ranking or anything yet because we don't know where he's going to go. But if he went to New England, that's obviously a boost for skilled players in New England. Uh, and then if they take Mac Jones, they uh, depart or they allow uh, Jimmy G to play somewhere else. I'm not really changing my ranking on 49ers skill players. I don't think Jimmy G is someone that like really, really elevates. Like obviously he elevates in New England because Newton just runs the ball every play. And he's not that good at throwing. So it's like you're elevating from a guy who's just not that good at throwing the football. But Jimmy G and Mac Jones, what's the difference going to be in fantasy for those skill players? Probably not all that much. So I wouldn't uh, be too worried about that. Uh, and then the final one, KC is still bullish on Miko Hardman. Listen, I know he's fast. I know he's athletic. But until we see a situation where they start the season with Tyree Kill and Miko Hardman as the clear one and the clear two? No. I just He's nothing more than a late-round dart throw. Like, they still have Tyreek Hill ahead of him. They still have Travis Kelsey ahead of him. They still use the running backs ahead of him. And I bet you they bring in uh, another receiver to play ahead of Miko. So he's probably going to be, at best, the fourth, but very likely the fifth or the sixth option in the offense. So still not really a guy I typically want to go after. Stat of the day. So... Uh, Thursday, yep, it was Thursday. So Thursday's question, uh, there were five running backs with over 3,000 rushing yards since 2018. Derrick Henry, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, and I said, what other player? The answer is Chris Carson. I was a little surprised when I was kind of looking for different stats. I saw this one. Um, but yeah, he's been really, really good. Uh, so the winner on YouTube was Caps with a Cup, and then the winner on Twitter was Jacob, and then a bunch of numbers. Uh, today's stat. Among the seven skill players to score over 20 fantasy points per game last season, full PPR scoring, and then they had to have played at least like five games, um, only one of them was drafted outside the first two rounds in fantasy. Who was it? This is skill players. So running back, wide receivers, and tight ends. Um, although it's, it's not a tight end, I'll just tell you that. So uh, these are the spots we've done. Oh, and I wanted to bring up actually... Here are the breakdowns. So if you guys are submitting different breakdowns you want me to do, uh, but you see it on this list, like don't submit Miles Sanders and Joe Mixon in like every single video. I mean, you can, like it doesn't hurt anyone, right? Maybe, honestly, if you keep submitting them, then maybe just push it up my board for which ones I want to do because I don't really have an order for them right now. Um, but you don't have to because everyone you see here in the green is probably going to be done at some point. The ones in the question marks, I'm just not sure on yet. Uh, but yeah, if you see him on this list, he's got a, a green X right here. I'm probably going to end up doing it. Uh, but if you don't see it, that's the biggest thing. If you don't see your matchup uh, that you want to see broken down on this list, write that because it means I haven't really seen it yet. Um, okay, so spots done. We did four last time. I said we'd go to the end of the draft this time. So we will do 11 and then we'll probably go back to like five or seven and then we'll go to 10 after that. And then we're going to be done everything first run around, but we're just going to keep doing them uh, after that. So let's minimize this. Uh, we're going to do another full PPR. We'll give that one a little bit more love. 11. Uh, we're going to go back to two receivers. So last week we did a three wide receiver setup. Um, and we said under that setup, you got to think that people are targeting wide receivers a little more. Going back to two, so we're going to bump this down to normal. Uh, we'll keep everything else the same. So one quarterback, two receiver, two running back, the tight end, one flex spot, five bench, the one defense, no kicker. Uh, but I want to change this up. So I want, I want like, I, I have no idea. I haven't like practiced on this yet. Uh, I have no idea how like this system rates. Like what is, what is the gaps here? Like they have a lot of different tiers. What is the difference between like high and very high? Like how, how early are quarterbacks going to go? But I know a lot of you comment, they're like, I can't take a quarterback late because everyone takes all these quarterbacks. 
Um, obviously, you know your league. Like, you know if every single year there's no one left in the 13th round. Well, don't wait until the 13th round. Like, you still have to draft the quarterback. Uh, so, like, I obviously don't know exactly what the computer's going to do here. Uh, so, you know more than me what your league's going to do. But uh, I want to see how it kind of works out if you're in a league. Because we talk about this season. I mean, quarterback early is going to be a strategy for a lot of people. Like, you're going to want to be getting your Mahomes, your Dak. Um, those are probably the two that I'm targeting the most. But, I mean, uh, your Kyler Murray's, your Josh Allen. Like, I guess Kyler Murray kind of targeting him as well. Um, but those kind of players, like, they're going to be a really big edge this season over someone who's drafting later. But I want to see how a team can work out if we wait late because quarterbacks are getting taken early. Again, I don't know if this is going to, how early that's going to reach. I don't know if that's going to force them to take, like, multiple quarterbacks. I don't know what it's going to do. Um, but I want to do that. And then I don't want to take a tight end early again um, because we've done that, like, a million times. And so we'll bump that up really high. I don't even know what that was. We'll bump that up really high as well, and hopefully this will just create a situation where we're not like like there's no value for us to take because that's what I want to like simulate here. Because again, on average, we kind of want to be taking those early, but if they get taken earlier than us, what do we do? That's what we'll test out uh, in this one. But again, I don't exactly know how early. Maybe if they're like taking them way too early and it's unrealistic, then. Okay, it doesn't. I was just worried that they were going to take a bunch of quarterbacks in the first round because I did that. Uh, and then we'd have to, like, I don't know, we'd have to lower the rating because I don't think it's that realistic to take them in the first round. Uh, but good, good. We'll see how early they get up, end up getting taken here. So, remember we're in full PPR. Um, running backs, fly off the board. McCaffrey, Barkley, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Zico Elliott, pretty standard. Uh, Adams goes. We see Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Jones, and then Tyreek Hill. That's pretty standard. In general, right here, I'm probably taking Travis Kelsey. But again, we are not going to do that in this one. I'm going to hide the drafted players. Very nice. Um, so again, we're, we're not going to do that. Um, we're obviously not taking quarterback uh, in the first round. So our options, full PPR. Uh, yeah, Diggs and DeAndre Hopkins, 1-2 uh, there. Uh, but first round, unlikely. That we go that route. Um, for running back, we've got Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler. I would say Cam Akers. Um, I'm not 100% sure that I would go him over Eckler because the reception is going to be there so much. Um, still working through. We have the PPR rankings up on the site now. I added a ton of rankings. So for Dynasty, we've got Rookie on the site. We've got Super Draft. Super Draft? We've got Super Flex on the site. Um, normal dynasty, and then now we have PPR and half PPR for redraft, but I'm still working on getting it like more synced up. Um, honestly, when you guys are watching this, it might be more synced up because I'm going to work on that after this. Uh, but I'm going to be working off my half PPR because that's much better here. Um, in half PPR, I do have Chubb ahead of Austin Eckler, but I have a feeling when I get it more synced out in full PPR, Nick Chubb's just not going to get as many receptions. Eckler's going to be much higher in that area. Uh, and if like he's fully healthy with, with Herbert for the entire season, that's real nice. I mean, that, that, is, that is potential for, what, 90 receptions, 12 to 13 touchdowns. Really, really nice in full PPR. So I think we go after, I think we go after Austin Eckler here. Um, See what's available. Oh yeah, it's the turn. So we should have yeah, we should have two really nice picks here. Um, we do see Mahomes go, so that that's good. I think that was a good spot for the computer to kind of take because I guess it's possible someone takes him this early uh, in your hometown leagues. Uh, and we see Michael Thomas go. So we still have the same people we were talking about before. Um, I'll list off the other running backs for those listening on iTunes, Spotify. Uh, but it's Swift, Mixon, Miles Sanders, Gibson, Akers, James Robinson. Uh, Dobbins, Clyde, kind of like those types of players. Um, think, I mean, how many, it's a lot of picks, but we go through all of this. It's going to be, what, 20 are going to go by. I think it's possible we can grab another one of like, well, we're not going to watch Jacobs, but like Montgomery, hopefully Dobbins or Robinson, but Carson, like in that range, I think we can get another one. So I would prefer to take a receiver here. Um, again, would take Kelsey, but we're not going to do that in this video. Um, so they would just come down to Diggs, Hopkins, Metcalf, AJ Brown, Ridley. Um, we'll see what I have wide receiver at. 
Um, so in even in half PPR, I have Hopkins, then Metcalf, then Diggs. I have to imagine that Diggs will jump over Metcalf in full PPR, but I think Hopkins would still be ahead in half. So we'll take Hopkins here. I think that's a uh, a very very safe start to the draft. Um, pretty darn sure that Austin Eckler and uh, DeAndre Hopkins are going to be a very large part of their respective offenses. So, like that start. Uh, we'll pull up the draft board, see who has gone. Uh, we see all three of the tight ends go. All three like the good tight ends go in the second round. Kelsey, Kittle, and Waller. So they're off the board. Uh, only Josh Allen has gone for quarterbacks. And then running back, we see Chubb, Swift, Miles Sanders, Gibson, Akers, Carson, Mixon. That makes sense. They all go. Um, and then we see Diggs go right after us. Uh, then A.J. Brown, Ridley Metcalf. Makes sense. Allen Robinson, McLaurin, Jefferson, uh, Keenan Allen, and Julio Jones. So no surprises so far in this draft. This is what you're going to see. Um, so our options, we've got Godwin. Uh, we did a video literally yesterday going over Godwin and Mike Evans. I said that I will be ranking Mike Evans ahead of Godwin this season. Um Amari Cooper, though, that's an option. Robert Woods is an option. Um, but boy, would it be nice to grab, like, two of these. I kind of want to grab two of the running backs. Because what if we could do, we could grab these two, pair them with, I want to pull up my team on the left here. Here's my roster. We grab two of the running backs. We'd have Eckler, and let's just say, like, what two would we want? Probably, like, I want to say Clyde and James Robinson, but I'd be fine. We'll pull up the rankings. I don't. I don't really have a full take on Clyde yet because I want to see the draft. But assuming they do nothing else, bring people in, or like nothing else of consequence, bring people in in the draft. Like he's the guy right now, so that's pretty nice to have. Um, I do have Dobbins. Then James Robinson, then Carson, then Clyde. Um, but I, I think that whole range. I mean, they're separated by like nothing. They're like literally all back to back to back. Um, so maybe this is our first. This is our first opportunity to ask you guys for the poll. So put in the comment section, and I'll pull it on Twitter. What's your combination here? Or I guess you can take two. Pick your favorite two of Clyde, James Robinson. Dobbins, um, that's probably it. I guess David Montgomery, but probably not. Just, I thought Carson, did I say Carson before? Did I like read his name? I get taken there. Well, okay. Um, pick two of Clyde, James Robinson, and Dobbins. And I want to see how you guys will rank that. Um, I think since it's full PPR, I'm going to bump Dobbins down in this because there's just really no scenario in which he has more than like one and a half receptions per game. Like he just isn't going to catch the ball. Um, so we'll take the guy on like the best offense in football. Uh, and then we hope that Robinson's still there. So Dobbins goes and then Noah Fant goes. So maybe we tiled it up a little too much. Uh, but I guess it's possible if you're in your hometown league and people are doing this and then someone's doing this and then there's a huge run. I don't know. I just figured maybe quarterback would be going there. Um, but again, we said we weren't going to do it, so we're not going to take the quarterback. We'll take James Robinson. Um, we're set on running back. So that's a really nice core of running back. Eckler, Clyde, James Robinson. I mean, again, assuming KC doesn't bring someone in the draft in like a relatively high draft spot, which would make sense for them to do. Uh, we've got three guys who are going to be like featured weapons in their offense. Um so the one problem with what I've just done, uh, we took the three, but I love Kareem Hunt. I think Melvin Gordon's a value. If they don't draft someone, they definitely could. Uh, and then I think, I mean, Chase Edmonds is an exceptional pick here. So I'd love to get him. Um, but like now we have diminishing returns, right? Like we've already taken three running backs. So every running back we get after this is less valuable to our team. And when I look at the wide receivers, almost wish I'd gone with a wide receiver at that last pick why we do mock drafts, um, but like, would I rather have, you know, gone with Mike Evans here and then taken, I mean, I would probably end up still taking Chase Edmonds and I might get him anyways, 
Uh, but I guess that's the point is we're still in this range where there's like three guys left we really like, but we don't necessarily need one of them. Um, just something to think about. Uh, but looking back at our team, uh, CeeDee Lamb, Tyler Lockett got that new deal, Brandon Ayuk. Um, Boyd is a little bit risky because there's talk that they could get uh, Jamar Chase. Looks like Burrow wants him. And if you have Jamar Chase in there, it doesn't really affect T. Higgins. T. Higgins is still going to be a monster, but it definitely affects Tyler Boyd. Boyd gets like his fantasy value all from this volume. That volume is going to take a massive hit if they have Chase and Higgins. So he just wouldn't he wouldn't really be that great. It would be a huge boost for Joe Burrow, though. If Burrow was throwing to Chase, Higgins, and Boyd, oh my goodness, that's a really nice, really nice combination there. Um so we're definitely going to take a wide receiver with this pick. Uh, I would say in full PPR, it is probably between it's probably between the three that they have: Lamb, Lockett, Ayuk. Um, I'll see how I have that. I guess concerns over the volume for Lockett. I know he did great last season, but if they are talking about reducing the volume a lot, that's a concern. Um, I have a yuck first, um, and then lamb. So, what do we think? My, here's my other thought, though. So, when I was saying that, I was initially saying I'm going to take Chase Edmonds. Would we rather take a yuck, hope we get Chase Edmonds, or go with two and take Lamb and a yuck? to pair with Hopkins, since we already have three running backs. Now, I think if I took Chase Edmonds here, I have the potential to have four running back ones, which is pretty nice to have. And I really would only need like one handcuff late. Like I would probably only spend one more bench spot on running back, and it would probably be with like the last pick in the draft. I could just hammer out wide receivers after this. But I already have three that I kind of like. Who, who could we, we could still take some nice receivers, but I think it would probably still be better to our team. Yeah, I think it'd probably still be better to our team to take Lamb here, take Brandon Ayuk, unfortunately not get Chase Edmonds. Um, I think it's better to our team, but I think that he is just an awesome pick. Because uh, if you look at their... Um, their draft picks, they don't have that many early on. So they have like one to two opportunities to take a replacement or I guess a, a second running back to use with Chase Edmonds. And if they don't end up doing that, they improve the offensive line, they improve something else. He's just like the guy. And they'd be totally fine giving him 25 touches a game. And you're getting that in the sixth round. So I think he is a phenomenal pick. But I guess for how this team was kind of laid out, uh, and that is, again, like I said before, that's the danger of going three and one. If you take that third running back, now you have to lean more towards wide receiver, even if a value comes out of running back. Whereas if you're building evenly, you can go with whatever direction you want. So, uh, And that's also the benefit, I keep bringing this up, the benefit of taking tight end early. Because now I can grab that last value running back. I can grab that third running back, have that elite tight end. I, I just think it's, it's best to take tight end early this season. Um, but let's let's take a, keep an eye. Um, we don't need to ever keep an eye on tight end because if you don't get those top three, just be last. I mean, seriously, like there's so many tight ends. You could take Johnu Smith. Irv Smith, I think, can have a great season. Higby could have a great season. Comment could be really good. Um, Everett could be solid. Um, even just sticking with Tunyon, Gesicki, Ingram could be good. Um, like there's just... There's so many, and eight have already gone off the board. And it's not that there's so many that you can't take one early. It's that if one of the first three are gone, there's a million that are all the same. They're all virtually the same. So don't be the first to take the ones that are the same. If you don't get the elite options, the true difference makers, just be the last one to take all the guys that are basically the same. Um, similar for quarterback, but that's more of like that top tier. Like basically, if you miss out on this whole range, basically what's gone off the board right now, sands like Tannehill, uh, and of course Watson at this point. Like if you don't get one of these guys, I mean, I've said I really like Stafford, but we're not reaching, right? Like Brady, Burrow, Stafford, 
probably not gonna be a whole lot separating that. Um, you could try and do Wentz, you could just stream. Um, you could take Newton if you really thought he was gonna run for a lot. You could take Lawrence, if you think he starts, I mean, he's gonna start week one. If you think he starts, he's gonna be good. Um, you could take Taysom Hill if he's confirmed the starter. You could take Jameis Winston if he's confirmed the starter. Like, there are definitely options. Um, again, my lean is Stafford, and my lean is actually take one early. Um, but I'm not going to take Stafford here because the value's kind of gone away. At this point, I'm not taking Stafford in the seventh round. I would have just taken someone in the fifth round that was much better. Um, so, all of that is to say we're not taking a tight end of the quarterback with this pick. Um, we could go back to running back. We could take, um, honestly, the pick would be Leonard Fournette. I feel like I take him every time, but I think he's going to be the starter of the season. Uh, and he was phenomenal in fantasy down the stretch last year. It's a great offensive situation for him. Going to get receptions. Going to get touchdowns. Um, until I see something that indicates they're going to use Ronald Jones more, I'm just going to assume that Leonard Fournette's the guy. Uh, don't really see anyone else there. So Fournette at running back. Uh, wide receiver. Love Chase Claypool. Um, not big on Parker this season. Not huge on Corey Davis. Um, I like LaVisca. Um took a little bit of a hit with Marvin Jones side, but I think I think Claypool is pretty clearly the top receiver left on the board. So we'll take Claypool. Um, we'll probably take Fournette with this pick. I've gotten some questions about Miles Gaskin. Um, yeah, he would be a phenomenal pick in this range if they weren't going to add someone else. But everything seems to indicate that they want to feature back and that they don't think he's on the roster right now. So... I think more often than not, uh, they're going to take someone early in the draft. They're going to sign. I mean, I've, I've seen James Conner linked to them. Like, they're going to sign someone. I just don't think they want to go with Miles Gaskin as the lead guy. But if they do, if all of that is like a smokescreen for something else, and they don't take anyone in the draft, don't sign anyone in free agency, Gaskin is the guy, yeah, he's going to go much earlier than the eighth round. Like, I can tell you that much. Um, but he's going, he's going in this range, I think, because... Of that fact that no one really thinks uh, that he's going to be the guy this season. Um, like Najee Harris is off the board. Remember the other running backs we're looking at are uh, Etienne. Um, not going to go in this range. If I think, I mean, I don't know where he's going to be drafted. That's going to indicate everything. But probably around now. Probably like eighth, ninth round is where he'll go, depending on the draft spot. Um, Javonta Williams. Uh, Way down here, he'll probably, depending on the draft spot, go kind of early. Um, but yeah, those are the only ones that are really standing out right now. But I don't even, like, we don't have to, right? Because we're going to have Eckler, Clyde, James Robinson, Fournette. We're not really going to need to take uh, any of those guys late. I mean, we, we could take one of those two. Um, I think our team would just be better off taking at least one more. Well, I guess we could split. I don't know. Yeah, because that's actually a lot of wide receivers. We'd have Hopkins, Lamb, Ayuk, Claypool. Do we really need two more receivers? We should probably take... We should, we'll split it. We'll do a running back and a wide receiver. Um, exact same quarterbacks and tight ends because this is what happens. When there's a run on those positions, they all go away. Don't take one in this range because that's horrible value. Literally two rounds just went by and no one took anyone. Um, oh, there goes Javonta Williams right there. So did, uh, yeah, ETN goes like right after we picked. Okay, so it's good that they were being taken early. Um, if they're being taken early by the system, though, they should be higher on the cheat sheet, right? I mean, shouldn't you be doing that, fantasy pros? Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. But yeah, the, uh, don't be the first one to take this whole range. Uh, so we're going to wait. We're probably just going to take a tight end in the very last round. Um, quarterback, again, I think we can wait uh, another round. We're, we're targeting Stafford here, but we'll be fine with Burrow. Uh, we'll be fine with Tom Brady. Um, we would prefer one of these three, but, I mean, everyone already has one, so we'll just wait. Um, I don't think any running backs are going to stand out here. I mean, Zach Moss, I don't know. There's a possibility they bring someone in as well. Um, or they did. Who? They brought in someone that didn't matter. Like It didn't matter at all. I don't even remember who it was. They signed a free agent. Maybe it'll come to me. Uh, but it didn't have much of an impact. It wasn't like a high name free agent. Um, gross. Yeah, it, it's gross in this range. Uh, so we'll just we'll just leave that. Uh, we'll go to wide receiver. Um, Ty probably being undervalued right now. 
Um, no to Shepard because they just brought in Galladay. No to Crowder because I don't really know what team he's going to play for. But even if he stays, they have Corey Davis. Um, Mike Williams definitely is upside if he and Herbert kind of take a step uh, forward this season. Not in love with Marvin Jones. So it's it's Mike Williams. It's T.Y. Hilton. Um, no to most of these guys. You can take a shot on Ruggs. Um, Paris Campbell you could take a shot on. Julian Edelman, you could take a chance on. I mean, Edelman is probably being really undervalued. I'm not 100% sure he's going to be on the Patriots, but what if he went to, like, if he went to Tampa? How interesting would that be? If if the Patriots, like, I don't know. Because he's obviously not in the long-term plans of New England. He's not in anyone's long-term plans. Like, he's at the tail end of his career. Had a great career, but he's at the tail end of it. Um could the Patriots just be like, hey, we want to develop like these young receivers? Cut him? I, I, don't, I don't really know. I just have this feeling that he's maybe not going to be in New England. And if he's not in New England, I mean, who do you think he's going to go for, right? He's going to go to Tampa. Uh, but again, that's pure speculation. I have no idea there. But it's a possibility, and it's kind of baked into the upside of this pick. Uh, but no, I, I think... I mean, I think you just go with, with T.Y. here. Like, I, I'm not a huge T.Y. fan, but... The tenth round, why not? Why not just take a chance on that? Yeah, of course, there's a ninety-five percent chance he's going to be there. I have the eleven pick. There's only two pick people that go by. Um, okay, I, I guess the, the answer here would be Zach Moss, right? Because if they don't, if they don't draft someone really early, like, I mean, they hate Devin Singletary. They refuse to use him, so he could absolutely be the guy. Uh, so I'll just take him late. Uh, but again, I, they could draft someone, so that could be a bad pick. We'll just have to find out. Uh, and then we've saved it for the end. We've saved quarterback, tight end, and defense. Um, we'll just grab Stafford because we want him. We just want to make sure we grab him. Um, and I want Irv Smith at this next one. Yeah, so, I mean, we still got two guys that I really like this season. The computer's going to hate it because they're downgrading all the things that... Uh, they're downgrading taking... Oh, Trey Sermon also was the other running back that I was thinking about. Um, they don't like taking the the tight end that early. And you could have honestly gone with Gusecki there as well. Um, but I, I really think Irv Smith without Rudolph there, I don't know. I feel like people are overlooking how good he could be because that offense is so consolidated. And look at how good he was down the stretch last season. Like They literally only have... Jefferson Thielen. Those are the only two receivers they throw to. They've got Dalvin Cook. And it's Irv Smith. You know, it's such a consolidated offense. Sure, they're not going to be the highest volume passing offense. But when they drop 30, which they do a lot, it's still a good team. When they drop 30, like the touchdowns are all coming through those four. The yardage, the receptions, all those four. It doesn't take anything to be a tight end one. It, it takes virtually nothing. So he's also very, very young, very athletic. I don't know. There were definitely a lot of plays last season uh, that they were like lining him up out wide. They were at the goal line. They're like, hey, this play is clearly designed to get the ball into Irv Smith's hands. I don't know, man. A lot of upside in Irv Smith. Probably shouldn't be going this late. Uh, and then, of course, defense. We'll just take whatever. We'll just take the bucks every time. Um, don't care about the grade. We'll go over the team um, here. Make it bigger for you guys. Okay. So our starters. Stafford. Again, we're all over him on the Rams. I think he's going to have a monster season. I think that translates into Cup, translates into Woods, Akers, everyone there. Um, so Stafford at quarterback. Austin Eckler, full PPR league, love that. Austin Eckler and Clyde at running back. We've got DeAndre Hopkins, CeeDee Lamb at receiver. Irv Smith tight end, we just went over him. James Robinson in the flex, Bucks defense. And then a nice upside bench. Brandon Ayuk. Chase Claypool, Leonard Fournette, T.Y. Hilton. I mean, he's not going to be a wide receiver one, but he could pretty easily be a guy that we can throw in there and stream. And I mean, I know I feel like he's like closer to dust at this point, but I mean, he could still he could still definitely put together a few few good games. And who knows? We could even trade him if he has a few good games. And then Zach Moss. That's like a pure speculation of they hate Devin Singletary. They don't end up drafting someone. And then he could go into the season as the running back one on Buffalo, goal line back, getting receptions, and we got him in like virtually the last round. So I think that's a good team. I think uh, the one mistake in this draft was pretty clearly what we had gone over. 
I think it is taking James Robinson. I think optimally, if it's even close, we should probably just be alternating running back and wide receiver because when we got to this pick down here, we wanted to take Chase Edmonds, but we couldn't end up doing that. Um, I mean, we could have, but we would have had four running backs and just the two receivers. Maybe it would have been fine just having DeAndre Hopkins, CeeDee Lamb, and Claypool. We would have definitely been thin, um, but maybe maybe that would have been fine. Um, I don't even think that's like poll worthy though. I just think like optimally, maybe we just should have taken uh, Chase Edmonds with one of those two picks. Um, I guess we can do we'll do like a quarterback comparison. So we took Stafford really late. Um, another opportunity I was actually thinking about it here was taking Kyler Murray uh, in the fourth. So. How that turned out was James Robinson and Stafford. Would you rather that or would you rather Kyler Murray and what running back would we have taken? I mean, you're looking at like Jamal, Gus, I guess Sermon? Probably. I'll pull up the cheat sheet if like there's another running back that wasn't drafted we would have taken. Um, goodness. I mean, maybe Lynn Bowden would probably be a name on the list. Uh, okay, we'll do we'll do your favorite between Sermon and Bowden. Uh, so, would you rather have Kyler Murray in one of those two, Sermon and Bowden, or would you rather have uh, Matthew Stafford and James Robinson? I actually think that's a really good comparison. So, that is the end of this one. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting that like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new? Thanks for watching.